Well, folks, welcome back to Through a Scottish Prism. It's been a week since we last had a wee chat. Great to have you back. Great to be here to talk to you. Um, I've got my, my, my guests with me ready to go, and I hope you are. So if you haven't got your cup of coffee, go and get it quick, and let's get started. I'm delighted to see I'm joined by Yvonne Ridley. Yvonne, hello, my friend. How are you? I'm very well. Firing Good. on all six cylinders, I hope. Good. Always a pleasure to see you. Never a chore. Um, we've got from Myanmar, the Coatbridge Cavalier himself. Phil Boswell, and from there in my city of birth, Tommy Sheridan has joined us. Tommy, how are you, my friend? I'm fine, Roddy, yeah. I'm still trying to get to grips with the idea of having two days of sunshine. Um, absolutely <laughs> outstanding. Uh, but it was supposed to be wonderful today as I'm sitting here in my living room looking out the, 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 the windy. It's very dull. Uh, and yeah, we're, we're promised three days. <laughs> <laughs> Never the BBC quite they off. lie about the weather. <laughs> they do. Um, so uh, it's great that you're here, Tommy, because it's a fortuitous thing. Um, because I just wanted to tell you, um, I uh, I just booked my flight yesterday to make sure I'm in Glasgow for the anniversary of the referendum in your George Square Hope over fear on September the, Sunday, the September the 18th. Techie, could yep, you stay the in The yes, the vote takes place. Brilliant. Thanks for uh, giving it a wee shout out here. Uh, Roddy, um, as you say, it is such a significant day, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it is exactly eight years, exactly eight years since we had our first date with Destiny. Uh, and now we have, uh, you know, we have a date for Indie Ref 2, which, uh, you know, I'm sure as we discuss this show today, we will develop uh, how important that date is or not in some people's eyes. But the fact that we uh, can gather in George Square on the 18th of September, exactly eight years since the first date with Destiny, and talk about where we've been and where we're going. Uh, because 19th October 23 should be our second date with Destiny. And I, I think what we have to do, Roddy, collectively within the whole Yes family, because the yes Festival is about inviting everybody from the Yes family this is, is about unity of purpose. And what we're trying to say is the 19th October is no longer the possession of just the Scottish Parliament. It's now the possession of the Scottish people. people. Uh, and therefore, we don't drop that. We don't allow that to drop. 19th October is when we have Indy Ref 2, regardless of what any guy in a big cape and a wig decides to say, we are going ahead uh, and we're going to win it. And you don't have to sign a pledge, and you don't have to be a set man. Anyone who believes in Scottish independence, turn up now. Folks, if I can get there from Barcelona, and Phil, he's going as well. He's making it from Myanmar or Korea, wherever he may be at the time. He's going to make it too. You can make it. There's no reason not to, and it's time we got a huge crowd back Aye. together again. And this is as good a time as any to let the people, the house jocks, and Westminster know that we're not taking no for an answer, which nicely, Tommy, thank you very much. You've allowed me to segue into my first topic I want to discuss today, which was, uh, Yvonne, you probably saw that earlier in the week where the, the British government um, tried to get the, the Section 30 application to the Supreme Court kicked out before it was even heard. They didn't even want to allow substantive arguments um, to be heard. Fortunately, the Supreme Court didn't agree, but that was the type of contempt that Westminster holds that they didn't even want to discuss. We don't even want to hear the substantive arguments. And that's what we're up against, and that's what we've got to fight against, is it not? Absolutely. And, um, you know, this move uh, was led by Boris Johnson, who is going to be out very shortly. But you look at the two contenders, and they're in exactly the same uh, track as Johnson. So, you know, we can expect more um, of this sort of uh, resistance uh, in the future. But, um, you know, I, I've been a critic of the Supreme Court, but I'm glad that they dispensed with it as quickly as they did. But then again, you know, we know that there's always a lot of theatrics in London and uh, this is just the first act. Um, but what uh, what also surprised me, you know, on um, 
talking of the the contenders, uh, Liz Truss has just gone round upsetting so many people uh, with her, her crass remarks. But one of the um, the countries that she's really upset is China. And I don't know if you saw, but China um, criticised remarks uh, by the Foreign Secretary on the shenanigans between Beijing and Taiwan. And uh, unfortunately, the Foreign uh, Ministry spokesman Wang Wenbin said that uh, if the UK... Uh, uh, he well, he likened it to if Scotland were to split from the United Kingdom, and he said that's how Beijing regards Taiwan. Um, obviously, not helpful for those of us in the Yes movement, but it is interesting that uh, Scotland is now becoming um, an issue that is attracting global interest. So. Mm -hmm. Although a lot of uh, YES supporters do feel as though we're isolated within the UK, our issue is, uh, is definitely one that um, is attracting all sorts of interests from overseas. Yeah, but, but, um, this, of course, Tommy, will not stop the British government trying to demean it, to talk it down, to, you know, use the, we know it's coming, the um, once-in-a-generation once nonsense um, or you had your vote in 2014. Um, we've just got to ignore that noise in the background and just go for it full steam as in Yes Festival. I've got to say, Roddy, I, I, I think it is all an utter fluff in theatre. Uh, this idea, I, I saw some headlines and I saw some comments about people saying that we'd won round one. And it's, it's utter pish, Roddy. There's no one round one at all. Uh, it's called a preliminary matter in legal terms. And, and the preliminary matter was that the British government says, listen, it's no use even meeting uh, because there is no argument for the Scottish Parliament to legally be able to hold a, a, a binding referendum. Um, and all that's happened is the judges have said, no, actually, we want to hear the arguments. That, that's all that's happened. And you and I know what's going to happen when they hear the arguments they're going to kick it out. It's just, there's absolutely no doubt of that. I mean, anybody that has got any semblance of belief that the Supreme Court in England, a couple of uh, hundred yards from the Westminster Parliament, is going to say, oh, aye, you Scots, of course, go ahead and hold your binding legal referendum. Get out, man. Get after drugs. It is not going to happen. They are going to say, no, you don't have the right. Why? Because Westminster is supreme. That, that's what they're going to say. Now, we must accept that they're going to do that and prepare for it. And the way to prepare for it, Roddy, in my opinion, is that we already say that we are going ahead regardless. Now, our job might be, and we can come on and discuss this is tactically and strategically, our job then will be to deal with the inevitable unionist boycott that will try to be organised against it. But as long as we can engender over 50% of the population in Scotland to participate, and as long as we then win the majority of that 50%, then you go to your UN and you go to your EU and you go to everybody else to say, hey, we now have the right to be recognised as an independent country. Until we get that, Roddy, I, I see this idea of God in the new the UN or whatever, I just think they're going to politely listen and then say, right, see you later, because you don't have a democratic mandate. Unfortunately, eight years ago, there was a vote, and we lost it. We lost it. There needs to be another vote that we win, and then we go with that as our case. So, uh, the Supreme Court stuff, uh, uh, Roddy, that whole thing about, oh, they're going to listen to us, maybe, maybe there's a chance. Nonsense. I'll, uh, I agree with you on the Supreme Court. I'll come back to you on the UN thing in a minute, if I may, Tommy. But uh, yeah. on with you, Phil, I mean, because Tommy's right about, you know, if we should just go ahead with it. The problem with that being, it goes back to something we've discussed on here before, which was the, the SNP 1-2 behaviour at the council elections, um, and which we'll 
I would ask you to keep away from a topic we're going to come on to in a minute, but local authorities. But um, what we've got now is that the unionists are in charge of all the local authorities. And the, the local authorities would have to um, supervise or, you know, put the facilities in place to hold the referendum. And if they get word from their masters in London not to cooperate, to boycott, as Tommy's hinted to, it makes it very difficult for us to go ahead with a, a referendum without the cooperation of the local authorities. Yeah, that the, the problem is the local authorities and the Scottish government are an extension of the existing system that we are trying to overcome. So they will be rallied against us and allied against us. And anyone who's compliant with the process and isn't thinking outside the box and isn't looking for a way for the Scottish people to, use, to, to, to rise up and get out of the, the colonisation that is our current predicament. I mean, I, I obviously read your uh, You Reap What You Sow article recently, and the, the options that were talked about in there are the options that we're really talking about here and we should be considering. Overlordship? No. But the UN colonisation, the, the, the special committee on, on decolonisation, the C24 committee, that, that was established in 1961, and it's a Grenadian, it's a Maguire, is the, the attorney that's currently leading that? We should be talking to the, looking at these people. Forget the local authorities; they're not, they're not going to help us. It's not in their interest to help us. They're going to continue to ride the gravy train, and that doesn't matter what colour of banner these council representatives are. they most of them are in it, are, seem to be in it for themselves, and we'll come on to that a wee bit later. But we've really got to look for people at Salvo and SRG. When we we can, can we persuade SNP? Can we take SNP to this trough to make us make us fight for and make them fight for independence and and move out of that very comfortable process that they're entrenched in? And I think we've got to look to SSRG and and, and Salvo and critically the will of the people to to take SNP along with us because they showed they've showed nothing to date. I mean, there is some, I mean, I agree with Tommy when we, we spoke before that at least that we're now talking about a day and we are moving a wee bit forward. But what have we had beyond that other than the, the, the comfy slipper philosophy? So no, we, we need to get them and, and maybe we can't force them to drink for it, but, they, but we've got to take this opportunity. There's no doubt about it. And um, we can't be relying on uh, local authorities, that's for sure. But that's the problem. I mean, what they want, Yvonne, if we look at the, the unionists in, in both sides of the border, they just want us to give up, to say, ah, well, okay, so what's the point? You know, there's no legal route, there's no democratic route. So, uh, ah, well, we'll just give up then, shall we? Huh? That, I mean, do they actually believe that we will do that? I um, I don't think they they care what we think, but mm -hmm. I, I am a beat. And I am, uh, I, I do see this current period as an opportunity, um, not because of the Scottish government, but in spite of it, because uh, it's sitting there like a, a rock trying to claim independence as an exclusive um, right of the SNP. Uh, we, you know, we can see what's going on here um, very clearly. But instead of um, being bewildered by it, uh, we're using the one weapon that uh, the Scottish government has no influence over and that the SNP has lost influence over, and that is people, people power. Mm -hmm. Events uh, like the um, George Square Festival that uh, Tommy's organising, uh, Phil's mentioned SSRG, and, and uh, there's all under one banner. There are so many movements now of people who can see what's happening and uh, they're thinking, well, let's form our own group just in case. And I think that, uh, that very soon uh, the people's movement will start to lead. And once it starts to lead this uh, Indie Ref 2. The SNP will have to keep up or become irrelevant. So I'm, I'm upbeat now. 
Well, it's good to know. Tommy, to come back to your point about the UN, um, I often I disagree with you, my friend, but I'm, I'm going to disagree with you here. Um, you say we don't have a mandate, but in effect, we have six or seven mandates that the SNP have got in the drawer. And the decolonization unit of the UN, that's exactly what it's there, because the colonial powers do not, never want to agree to or allow um, their colony to move on. And now, I know this offends some Scottish people. We are a de facto colony. And if the Supreme yep. Court kicks out this um, request from the Scottish government, in effect, surely, and you're the lead, you've got more legal than any of us in here, surely that's them saying, well, actually, Scotland's a colony. It's not a, it's not an equal nation inside this union. It is one, an English colony, just a region. Um, so, and that's why we do have to go to the UN decolonisation, in my opinion, on the day that um, the Supreme Court kick it out. If they do, let's hope they don't. I hope we're all wrong, but I, if they do, that's what I believe. Do you not see it that way, Tommy? I hope we're wrong as well, Roddy. I, I mean, I've got to say that I, I, I don't uh, believe that what I'm saying and what we're all saying is something that we're hoping for. We, we hope we're wrong. We hope the Supreme Court does turn around and say, oh, wait a wee minute. Um, OK, you had your vote in 14, but since then uh, you've had five separate elections and we, we're supposed to live in a representative democracy. Let, let, let's bear that in mind that although there is the supremacy sovereignty of Westminster, it is within the context of a representative democracy. Well, since 2014, the party of Scottish independence, because we know that regardless of whether we feel that they are pursuing it and promoting it or not, they are the de facto leadership politically of the independence cause. They have won five national elections. Five national elections, for goodness sakes. Up until 2015, they had never won one. And they've now won five in, this, in the short space of uh, eight uh, years. So from my point of view, we have a massive case to take to the UN to say, please represent that, look at this and, rep and represent this. And they're going to say, as, as happens when you go to the European court, they're going to say, have you exhausted all of your uh, legal rights and avenues within the particular unit within the sovereign country of the UK? And what we're then going to have to say is, oh, yeah, we took it to the Supreme Court. And they, so they'll say, oh, well, wait a minute. So you've had the ability to go through the courts. You've, you've, you've got a Scottish court system. You've got a UK court system. In, in actual fact, in talking about your bit, about how you can say that you've exhausted everything, in many ways, what um, Nicola did, I think tactically is going to backfire because she should have taken it to the Scottish courts first. We, we, yes, we yes. should have had it decided in the Scottish courts. And by the way, the reason she didn't, in my opinion, is because she doesn't think the Scottish courts are even going to recognise it. She doesn't even think the Scottish court would say, yes, you've got the right. Now, if you can't get your own courts to say that you've got the right to do it, how the hell are you going to expect the Supreme Court to do it? And that's why I think she, she avoided it personally, Roddy. And I think any UN legal committee, the decolonisation committee, that forum's going to say, well, wait a wee minute, you never even exhausted your, your own legal systems. Uh, how can you come to us? You have agreed to this arrangement uh, via various uh, devolution acts. They'll, they'll, they'll take us back to the uh, 1998 Scotland Act. They'll say, well, in that act, you agreed that in issues of constitution, it remains with Westminster. That, that's what you agree. That, that's what this parliament's about. Personally, that's what I think they'll say, Roddy. Now, obviously, I'm being devil's advocate because I don't agree with them. But that's what I think they'll say. Uh, until we are able to say specifically that there was a vote, uh, a ballot that was about independence. I mean, you and I remember what happened in 17, for instance, because I've just talked about the SNP winning a vote in uh, an election in 17. Um, unfortunately, Nicola did everything but mention independence in 2017. Right. Um, so if we were to talk about, uh, yes, uh, that was won on the basis of independence, there's going to be plenty of evidence to say, no, that's not quite the case because here's the leader of that particular party said, and she's going to say, as you know, which was I found absolutely terrible, uh, she demobilised the people 
Uh, if you look at the vote and the difference between 15 and 17, it wasn't that everybody then voted for other parties. It was that people didn't turn out to vote for the SNP. The, the, the loss in their vote was to do with the, 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 the drop in turnout. And the drop in turnout was to do with the demobilisation because it wasn't about independence. So all of those wee factors, Roddy, make it uh, a situation where I don't have any faith in a, 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 another body looking at our case and saying that we uh, have done everything possible to get our independence uh, because the one thing that we haven't done is we haven't yet organised that uh, referendum against and in the teeth of opposition from Westminster. Because even if, and I'll finish, sorry, keep going on about this, even if the unionists say no, we're not taking part, even if the court says no, you don't have the right to hold a legally binding referendum, that's expected. Even the Section 30 agreement, it was based on uh, it doesn't necessarily be legally binding, but we as a parliament, you know, Cameron said that he would recognise it. Under parliamentary sovereignty, uh, if you look at it from a legal perspective, if Cameron had been removed, then the new incumbent could have said, yeah, but I'm not recognising it. And Westminster could have voted not to recognise it if we'd won. That, that, I'm not saying that would happen. Politically, you've you've got the, uh, the real politic. But you also have the legal position. And the legal position was a new leader could have turned around and says, I don't care that 55% have voted for independence. This parliament's not uh, recognising it. And as long as the parliament voted that way, then a referendum wouldn't have counted. Then you'd have been able to go to the UN and say, hey, by the way, look what they've done, blah, blah, blah. I think that's what we need now. We need to have a vote that we can say the majority of the Scots who took part in this election voted for independence. And I don't care about the, the, you know, we don't care about the unionists who have refused to take part. That's not our concern. They don't want to take part in a democratic show uh, of, of opinion. That's their, their problem. Don't come greeting to us afterwards. So, uh, Roddy, I, I hope I'm wrong on all of these things. But, but, but I go back to Tommy, the, the, the point I made with Phil is simple as this. With all the councils, barring I think Glasgow now is the only council in the whole of Scotland that's not under unionist control. If the Shambles. unionists of those councils refuse to make the schools and the voting places available, or the staff to man those polling stations available, then the, we cannot hold a referendum with or without permission. They need to participate. So how do you get around that? Again, Roddy, he, he, here's one of the arguments about the need to stand up and say we're doing it. Because then what you do is you turn Scotland into a, a, a situation where those who are not willing to participate, i.e. say councils and council leaders, we then expose them as the house jocks. We then dispose, expose them as the Uncle Toms, who are only prepared to do anything democratically to get Scotland's right to choose. The Scottish Parliament should be looking at online voting. The Scottish Parliament should be looking at provisions, uh, at even even if it means uh, Scottish Parliament-run buildings across Scotland be turned in and be used uh, for, for voting purposes, even if they were to say, well, instead of voting in one day, we're going to uh, have voting over a two-week period, come to the Scottish Parliament and register your vote. You know, you know, you can, there are, you can be inge ingenious about these things. You, you can have a situation where you develop massive queues of people waiting to vote, as was the case when South Africa first had the, the, the right to vote. And think of the powerful uh, imagery that that uh, sent out about people getting the right to actually take destiny into their own hands. I, all, I always think, Roddy, once you agree to do something, then you talk about how to do it. Uh, and right now, we've not agreed to do it yet, because I think we all know that the SNP leadership right now have mentioned 19th October but have done absolutely nothing, nothing since then to make it a reality. We need to say we're not allowing it to drop. Uh, you, you, every one of us recognise um, that, that the SNP as a political party was once a, a very vibrant uh, and, 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 and a very passionate organisation that, that was held together by the unity of a cause. That's not the case any longer. Sadly, sadly, that's no longer the case. But we, I think, are letting them off the hook. 
if we let them away with dropping politely and quietly this date. It's the first thing, it's the first date we've had since 2014. Don't let them drop it. Well, if, if you know, let's say they don't, Phil, they don't drop the date. We're going to get hit again with the one, um, the, the once in a generation nonsense. And as I say, if, if, if we look at um, the Good Friday Agreement, where they've determined that once in a generation um, for a border poll is seven years, but not in Scotland. Um, we've all seen those memes that go around during Brexit about, you know, there's no other nation in the world, I think, that can be in a treaty and not that the other party won't let them leave, except for viewers in Scotland. Um, so I'm I'm still concerned on that matter of, you know, how do we get how do we mobilise the population without the assistance of the councils? Um, but we have to find a way. If they say the Supreme Court say no, and the council say no, um, and everything the media say no, it's a very difficult position for us. What do we do? Yeah, but the, the important thing is is we need constitutional experts and people who understand the due process and protocols. I mean, this is, is what I do for, for my job, is to circumvent issues legally, um, to understand the process. And people people hear things um, and they assume, well, that's what... It, you hear a word like sanctions, it means something to someone and com something completely different to someone else. Then there's the legality of it. Then there's the application of it so the first thing we need to do is is to look to people like ssrg and salvo to understand what is a constitutional position what does c24 the special committee on De decolonization uh, do how does it work how's it set up i mean its chair is a grenadian the attorney i mentioned earlier keisha maguire which has got a promising name and 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 we we should be starting the process of testing our validity. What are the grounds? What are the rules for being considered? For example, one of them I know is, uh, do you control your own uh, borders? Well, no, we don't. Scotland does not control its own borders. And the other, another aspect of it is about the Scottish people. It doesn't necessarily have to apply to a geographical boundary. So there are lots of different uh, criteria that have to be taken into considered into consideration when we consider how we approach the UN if and when we do and who's we who's actually going to do it mm. so th there are there's a lot of constitutional questions and these are the types of things that Salvo and SNSRG I know are talking about because we've spoken to them about it and we've went and we've, we've uh, asked them about it to be bogged down by uh, your your councillor who the hell's going to let a councillor stand in the way of our freedom? I'm not. I don't care who they are and who they think they are. They're not standing in the way. They'll either get out, they'll get up, they'll either do what we want or they'll get out of the way and we'll remove them. I, it, it's, I mean, I know you talked about armed struggle <laughs> and you're, you're gigging and we're all against that, right? But you, you're testing people. I mean, there's a lot of talk. <clears throat> There's a lot of talk. We really need to do something. And what Tommy and the guys are doing with this yesterday is, is exactly what we should be doing. Mobilising again. Because the wind's been taken out the sails very much. And we're in the doldrums. And it's not good enough. Because we're not going anywhere. We need to get the sails up in full sail and march on and start doing things. And that includes testing the rules and checking the routes and seeing what's a dead end, seeing what's not. See what options. Check your options. Appraise the situation. Select the best option then go into execution phase. Mm -hmm. And and that, that needs a concerted, coordinated effort that ordinarily would rely on the Yes movement or somebody like a party like the SNP. But Tommy's right. The SNP have lost the gusto, the passion, the the intent that that, that once that once made it that made it everything it is that we've all contributed to. And and the sadness that we we feel and and the the anger about the betrayal, that's that's the bit. That's where the fire is going to come from. When people realise just how how much we've been betrayed, that's when we try to channel and direct people and 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 help. Hopefully, help guide them towards a peaceful, uh, legitimate solution to this hell of a predicament. Uh, Yvonne, we have anything we've discussed here, whether it's Tommy's suggestion that we hold the referendum come hell or high water and use government buildings or we go to the UN, it still takes political will. And Phil touched on it. 
who's going to do it? Because I, I, I don't want to sound negative in this, but the, the only you know, it should be our government, the people who have got the mandates. I don't get the feeling that they would be doing anything as dramatic as that. So it is up to people power, is it not? Absolutely. Who's going to do it? We are. We mm -hmm. are going to do it. We can't rely on a London court. We can't rely on the UN. Ask the Palestinians, ask the Kashmiris. You know, um, uh, they, they've been let the down. Though, you know, they. So let's f forget about all these other organizations, groups, courts, legal uh, politicians, the whole lot. We are going to do it. And when the people start to lead, the leaders have to keep up or they become irrelevant. It's not rocket science. We have it within our power to make changes. You know, a, a little woman sitting down on a bus in Montgomery donkeys years ago triggered an entire movement by saying, no, I've had enough. And we are getting to that stage. Yep. You know, never underestimate our own ability. And if the councils dared to stop a referendum, we, the people, will organise our bloody own. You know, we're not helpless. Mm -hmm. That is the SNP, the governments, the uh, Labour, the Tories, uh, the whole lot of them, they want people to think that they're helpless, that they mm -hmm. can't move without uh, their guidance, without mm. uh, this patriarchal system. But we can make a change and we can do it. And we can do it peacefully. Um, mm. Although I do know I lots of people keep telling me I'm going to dig up my claymore if this continues. <laughs> but, you know, we can do it peacefully and, and uh, by sheer people power. I, I agree, uh, Tommy. People put on it. This is going to sound like a setup, Tommy, because you're, uh, no, it's not yours, the Yesable, um, of which you're one of the, the sponsors, is actually as ideal a place as anywhere for us to get going again. Um, although I'd like to see it sooner, but I don't, you know, this I think is ideal because it is the people. And to you who are watching, um, you know, it's, you can't sit back any longer and wait for others to come up with the answers. Um, we can talk about it here. We can talk for weeks, especially the, especially us four could talk for weeks about this, but it's going to take action by us all. Now, if you're passionate, we've got to make a statement because I tell you, if there's 500 people in George Square on the, uh, the 18th of September, no one will notice. If there's 5,000 or 10,000, by God, not just, not just Edinburgh and Butte House will sit up and London it will be the UN in New York and in Switzerland. It will be, you know, all the people around the world will notice it. Whoa, it seems the old Scots are back on the march. And from there we can lead. So a techie, for my sake, would you stick up again that? So the people who haven't already taken a, a screenshot, got a chance to get a screenshot of the yesterday. Now take your screenshot now. There's no excuse for forgetting it. So that said... And what's vital about what you've, you've said there, Roddy, is this is for everyone. We're looking for all under one banner. We're looking for believe in Scotland. We're, yeah. we're looking for Scotland now. We're looking for all of the political parties that support independence, the SNP, ALBA, the Green Party. We're looking for them all to gather in George Square. They've all been invited to send speakers. This, this isn't about one organisation uh, addressing mm -hmm. everyone. The SNP's been invited. The Green Party's been invited. ALBA's been invited. All of them have been invited to take part in a festival which will be assembling, if you think about it, one month before the Supreme Court makes its decision. The Supreme Court will make its decision on October. We should make our decision in September. And our decision is it's going ahead regardless. And we've got to be careful. Yvonne was absolutely spot on. Sometimes leaders have to be very, very aware that they're not looking at a crowd walking in front of them and realising that they're at the back of the movement instead of leading the movement. Because right now, across the whole of the UK, 
and Stirling in, in about 20 minutes' time at 11 o'clock. Alistair McPherson, a former SNP councillor who was um, deselected by the SNP for being troublesome, for standing out and calling for Plan B that everybody else was looking for. Uh, he was deselected and stood as a, an independent and romped home uh, in his, as the Bannockburn councillor. He's holding a meeting at 11 o'clock this morning to set up the Scottish branch of the Don't Pay movement uh, against the energy profiteers. Excellent. And, uh, the greedy bastards that are taking the utter piss out of people by putting these prices through the roof and, and driving people literally into poverty and the choice between eating and, and heating. Uh, that's getting set up the now. Apparently there's uh, 150,000 have signed up to that to campaign beginning in, in October, and many people are making comparisons with what happened way back in 88, 89 with the poll tax. Remember, Roddy, I, I, I can remember, because <laughs> I've got the scars still in my back, of people talking about the problems of non-payment, of, of all the things you could need do, and, and what the things they will do, because they've got all the power. They'll send out sheriff officers, they'll get the councils to do this and sanction you, and all these things. By the way, Roddy, they did do that. They did do that, but we still beat them because there was enough of us united around a cause. And from my point mm -hmm. of view, you're going to get a repeat on the energy thing. I think you're going to see millions refusing to pay their energy bills. Hope we so. can't have things the way they are. I mean, sometimes you reach a position where you just can't accept things as they are. And I hope, Roddy, that we together can uh, inspire people within the Yes movement to say, no. As, as, as uh, Phil and, and, and Yvonne said there, we're not having some uppity, overpaid council uh, administrator, chief executive on £100,000 a year saying, no, you're not getting the right to vote. Uh, if we have to take other council buildings to open them up, let's take them out and, and let's open the vote. That's the way I think we've got to approach it, Roddy. But, but I think um, it's not so much refuse to pay, Tom, there's a hell of a lot of people not going to be able to pay, not even refusing to pay. Um, Poverty I, I was the I, biggest recruiting sergeant, Roddy. Poverty was the biggest recruiting sergeant during the anti poll tax campaign. Poverty mm -hmm. will be the biggest recruiting sergeant to the Don't Pay the Energy Bill campaign. So there's no uh, doubt about that. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's, um, it's, it brings me on to it. Um, I mean, the, I, I don't know if you saw, it, it was last night, I believe, um, the two Tory contenders. Oh, God, it's like two bald men fighting over a comb. Um, having a discussion and the two were standing up and saying they were actually laying out everything that was wrong the taxation has been too high we've got the highest taxation in seven years there's more people in poverty than ever and these fuel bills are out of hand there's a cost of living crisis and you're going yeah and it's your fault it's just the talking full as if you know it was all down to boris johnson or to or to um god i've forgotten her already so these are me um and, and do you think they just they don't live in the real world. They have no idea what it's like for people in real poverty. I mean, if I say I'm skint, I don't mean that my, my investments in the you know the Caribbean are tied up. I mean I'm skint. I've got no money. They don't understand skint. They don't they think that poverty is a life choice and that hunger is a choice because you can't manage your finances. These people are detached, they need a wake up call. We've got to give it to them, not just us in Scotland, yeah. but the whole country. Yeah, it's like uh, common people, the song. But who, we need to understand who these people are. You know, let, let's trust in Rishi Sunak. They're, they're, they're high achievers. You know, they, Rishi Sunak read philosophy, politics um, and economics at Oxford, then took his MBA at Stanford. You know, this guy joined Goldman Sachs and went to the city of London. What the hell does he know about life? And the common people and and, and str struggle and suffering. It's it's management of perception. It's a con game. Trust actually all, also studied exactly the same course: philosophy, politics, and economics. But at uh, Oxford, and then took a a, a, a chartered management accountant uh, position while working at Shell. So big corporation. She worked then at economic director for cable and wireless. These these are bright individuals, but they've got absolutely no relationship with the people oh, who are going sense. to be rising for this march because they're not affected by by, by and and it's, it's you're right what you say. They're 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 blaming each other for the current situ situation, and they're right. 
they're part of the machine that's that's caused the problem that we currently face as people. And the people, it's sad, it's tragic, it's come to this. People, are, the suicide rate has gone through the roof. The the depression, the the, the desperation, the it's, it's despair. It's utter despair. Like coming from friends back home, it's tragic, it's horrible to see. And if if you don't feel that passion, you, you you don't feel the pinch. I'm very lucky. I've got a good job. Okay, I've got to leave Scotland to do it. It pisses me off. But if you don't feel the pinch of the pain, what's your compassion for others? Get up and rise. Get up and rise and, and speak out for those who are, who, are, who are teetering on the edge of the abyss and join this march. You, we, you've got to be counted. You've got to stand up and be counted. See, for everybody that complains about us talking about it, well, I'm going. I'm coming from. I'm going to make sure I come from the far east, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to this. I'll get to this because it's about time we stood up and were counted. And if you have any compassion for your fellow man, woman, child, and you have even get one un, one slight understanding of what's going on in our country right now with people who are too. They're too proud to complain or shout or cry in front of you. The, the despair is horrific. It, 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 you, you should get angry and you should get even. And this is how we do it. We do it fairly squarely. We get we, we join as a group and we stand together because it's the only way that we can beat them. Uh, it's true that yeah, always, yeah. no matter whether it be wars, poverty, inflation, it's always the people at the bottom of the, the priority bond that get, get the worst hit. And two for you know for decades, well we've talked and tried and done our bit, mm. Tommy more than most. Um, it's the, the poorest in our society that feel the the hurt. But I don't want to sound as if I'm glad. That's not what I mean. What I'm about to say, um, and I hope I can articulate it properly. But this pain is about to go into the middle classes because it's that severe. Now it's going to be traumatic on the people who are already poorest in society. But when it starts hitting the middle classes, that's when I believe that things will start to happen. Because when the I'm all right jacks start not being I'm all right, then we could have a massive movement going. Um, would you agree that that's what we need to see, the, the middle classes, if you like, start to feel a bit of pain? Well, um, you know... Not that we want anyone to feel pain, I should stress. Uh-huh. It, it's... Um... It's, it's like watching this big soon army heading towards us. And uh, we all, you know, if you feel anything for your fellow man, whether they're working class, middle class, you know, whoever they are, we have to, we are stronger when we all stand up and, and, uh, and do something. And Phil's right, we've got to get angry and get even. And the the best uh, shot that we can fire, for starters, is by turning up at the festival. Um, you know, I I want to see scenes like uh, the Egyptians showed in Tahrir Square, and those you know when when they rose up, they rose up against tanks, against guns, against secret police, against uh, unimaginable oppression. You know, we're just asking people to jump on a bus or in their car or walk along or fly, you know, and turn up and show, you know, in numbers uh, how we feel about independence. And, you know, we're not going to get independence from the UN, from an English court, uh, even from the Scottish government. We're going to get it ourselves. That's how we do it, through people power. Agreed. <clears throat> and on that talk of people power, before I come back to you, Tommy, anyone that's watching this, if you know anyone who's organising, for example, um, you know, against don't pay, won't pay, anyone that's got any, they're welcome at the Yes Festival as well. This is for all Scots. And if you want to come along and promote your cause there, bring your banners. I'm sure Tommy won't mind. The more the yes. merrier. We want everybody there. Absolutely everybody. And I make a pledge now, Tommy. In every article and blog or anything I put, even about prism, I'm going to put up that uh, meme that you've got there, and I would advise you all to do the same. Start sharing it. Let's fill George Square to the gunnels. Let's have it, you know, let them go up Cochrane Street 
up St Vincent Street. Um, and, and, you know, just don't fill up the pubs too much. Leave some room for Phil and I to get, in and get a wee beer to slate our first. <laughs> no, no, keep do you know you, what you've just said there, Rod, is so important. Because see if the whole family online comes together and we all unite to promote this event so that everybody knows that it's happening. Yeah. That's when you get thousands turning up. Because you get everybody saying, I'm going. Why are you no going? And then you talk to your family, you talk to your friends, and you say to yourselves, what have we been asked to do here? Turn up and stand in George Square, listen to very talented artists playing live music. It's a yes festival. It's a festival for our future, and it will have talented individuals there entertaining you. We'll have speeches from all of the parties and the campaigns. You've just mentioned one there. And I'm going to make a, a prediction here, uh, Roddy, and you can hold me to this uh, at some time later this year. We are heading in the UK towards a general strike soon. There's going to be a general strike soon. Why? Because the trade union movement now is becoming much more important and prominent because the political opposition has let them down. The Labour Party is as useful as a chocolate bloody teapot. It cannot stand up for ordinary people and represent them. The trade unions have became the focus of political opposition. And after 20 years of falling living standards, real wages falling consistently, workers in every walk of life, and you talk about middle classes, Teachers are now deemed middle class. Most of them were working class men and women who just got an education and, and became teachers. They now be, might be middle class, but they've got working class values. Their standard of living has been ripped apart and there are no alternative. Real workers, train drivers, local authority workers, the communication workers represented by the CWU, they're all taking part now in strike actions and inevitably... It's going to become generalised and it's going to be a general strike soon. Now, the reason I mention that, Roddy, is things move on. When we're talking about standing up to the British government and having a referendum when they say we can't, eh? things move on because a couple of years ago, people might say, oh, you can't do that. You know, see when things break and people are no paying energy bills and people are taking it part in industrial action, even against the government that's going to introduce laws to introduce agency workers and try and break strikes, there is going to be an outbreak of civil disobedience. There's no doubt in my mind that's going to happen. We need to be at the forefront of that. We can't allow this to pass us by. This is an opportunity. So that's why assembling in the Glasgow on the 18th of September and saying loud and clear, hey, we were here 18, it's eight years ago. We missed our opportunity narrowly. Everybody said we'd no chance. We nearly did it eight years ago. Well, do you know what? 19th October, we're going to do it. We're going to do it whether you uh, are telling us we're allowed to or not. We are going to take our freedom. Yep. Um, we definitely need um, a wee bit of angry Scots. It's definitely what we need, Phil. I think it's fair to say we're a slow nation to rise, but once we do, you know, it's going to be very difficult to stop us. And this is a, a classic example. Um, but... Um, you know, I almost feel I don't want to change topic here because it's really going, and I, so there's a, and I know there's one you want to cover. Um, but we'll maybe come back to that. But the energy crisis and uh, is also another thing that's happening now is they've declared a drought in England. Um, and I've got a dog kicking off next door to me as well. Here they go, and nothing I, can, I want to strangle the damn thing, but I can't. Um, but should we be worried about uh, a just massive lost drought? all the pet lovers there, Roddy? I'm sure you've just lost <laughs> I've got another thing about cyclists. Until I came here, I didn't mind dogs, I didn't mind, I didn't mind cyclists, and now I drown them all. Um, uh, should we be worried about an English drought film? Uh, I mean, we know already something like the, the Welsh get 500 million litres of water taken out of Wales a year. Uh, and then they sell it back to them, of course, and they pay more for their, their Welsh water than the English pay for their, their Welsh water. Um, we know that Loch Ness, for example, has more water than every, every reservoir, every lake. Um, they won't take the money, they won't take the water out of Lake Windermere, etc. So there was talk way back in 2014 about running a pipe 
um, should we be concerned? Because the first thing, in my opinion, and they have to do is to uh, privatise Scottish water. Because they can't yeah. do it unless they do that. And, and should we be worried? Uh, yes, yes, we should. Um, I mean, the the, I saw that, the £14 billion plan to share water with England, and it was the Scotsman article in 2014 um, from November, and it was uh, Martin McLaughlin and Tristan Stewart-Robertson. Yeah. After, after, uh, after the referendum. After the uh, referendum. Exactly, after the referendum. And, I mean, England does get currently its water from Wales, but I believe it's uh, proven inadequate, so additional sources are being considered again, and Scotland is the obvious choice. I actually have no objection as long as there's a flow meter placed on the border and the money goes to an independent Scottish Treasury, but not until then. So uh, there are there are plenty of pipes because the North Sea, the, the oil and gas industry has built countless pipelines and we've got a great deal of existing uh, pipeline infrastructure, in, including water lines. So we, we, we certainly could sell it, but it comes to it and we've really got to be very, very cautious. We've spoke about the privatisation and, and, and what they're lining up because they've, they've, they've privatised just about everything most of us can think of. But as Sarah pointed out, Sarah Solius, on a previous show, there's there's still quite a list of things they can go after and one would be Scottish Water. So, yeah, we should be concerned. We shouldn't permit it. However we do that remains to be seen. Yeah, um, well, um, uh, this is all going on, Yvonne. Um, there was a, a fringe meeting. Ian Dale interviewed our Nicola um, to a very sparse audience in Edinburgh. Um, where she's hinted that um, she may be ready to leave. That'd be tragic. Um, do we do we think she's been serious, or was she playing to a very empty audience? Well, something's afoot because there's a great big interview in um, with Libby Brooks in today's in Guardian, Guardian. Um, and you know lots of manicured, polished post photographs and, uh, uh, and and talking of the future so I I think uh, that this is uh, Nicola Sturgeon putting out a um, uh, a job advert uh, yep. now because I think she knows that the game is up and if she does not deliver next October um she's going to be out and uh and and maybe she's wanting to uh jump before she's pushed so what what we are going to see over the next few weeks are lots of um glossy magazine interviews uh with nicola sturgeon gazing looking out to the future I refuse to call her just by a single name. She's not a bloody pop star. She's not an icon. She's not a legend. She's Scotland's first minister. Uh, the same with the guy in number 10. You know, I always refer to him as Boris Johnson. Um, he's no, you know, again, rock legend. Legend. So, um, yeah, I, I think that uh, the... The interview with uh, Ian Dale was just the start of uh, of many um, such interviews, and mm. uh, I was going to say, you know, good riddance to bad rubbish. But um, I was glad when Cameron went, and and we thought that uh, things couldn't get worse, and then we got Theresa May, and and then you know the rest is history. So. Um, <laughs> you have to wonder who is uh, in the side in in the sidelines waiting to uh, jump into her shoes. Mm. Um, the fact is, Tommy, um, with the exception, I think probably of Alex Sand, all politicians' uh, careers end badly. I can't think of any apart from that. Um, you know, who's who haven't hasn't? Well, Harold Wilson resigned due to ill health, but very few ever get out the out of it without, you know, ending in badly. Do you see this one ending badly or is she going to get out in time? I, define badly, Roddy. Um, Tony Blair oh. is now a multi-millionaire on the basis oh, of well, touring, I, I mean touring the world. 
put, put, put around the world as a war criminal, but being paid millions to sell and make deals selling arms to Saudi Arabia so they can destroy Yemen. I mean, it, it really, you know, I hate personalising things. That I, many, many years ago, I had the, the pleasure of um, considering Tony Benn a friend, and he, he sat me down in his, his house. In fact, he sat me on Keir Hardy's bench that he had in his garden um, in, in Holland uh, Park in, in London, and, 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 and told me, try, Tommy, never to personalise things. Try never to be uh, about the individual. He, he said, if you dance with the chimney sweep, then both of you end up very dirty. Uh, and, and I've always tried to bear that in mind. It's difficult because we're so bloody angry about certain people. You just want to stick a boot in uh, and go over the ball. Uh, but I, I like to take Tony's uh, advice and say... Um, that regardless of who leads the SNP, I personally don't care as long as they do what it says on the tin. Yeah, and right yeah. now they're not doing that. that. That's the problem. They are the party of independence. For God's sake, that's why they were formed. Have they forgotten mm -hmm. that basic principle? Uh, and what I would say to you, Roddy, and again, I'm sorry, I'm sounding like a broken down record here, but I'm going to say to you about the date again, because ordinary people I speak to, my, my Celtic supporters buses get quite a few SNP members and supporters on that bus. And, you know, so many of them were over the moon recently when uh, Nicola made her announcement. And they were coming up to me and they were saying, and some of them were chiding me a wee bit because I'd said there would be a referendum. The SNP aren't going to organise a referendum. And some of them were saying, oh, well, Tommy, I think you're wrong. Uh, look, there's going to be a referendum next year. And, and I was saying, yeah, absolutely brilliant. I'm really happy about it. The point is, right now, I think us utter, um, what would you call us, bootworms, uh, we, 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 are, we are passionate about anoraks. Anoraks. anoraks, yes, that's a great, great term, right? We, 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 we're political anoraks, and we know the nuances and what's going on at the very higher echelons of the, 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 the SNP and, and the things they're not doing and the things that they're, they're, they're letting us down with. I've got to say, I think most people don't. Because most people aren't anoraks. Most people don't have the time. Um, some yep. people, uh, you know, they're, they're just so uh, caught up with the daily uh, drudgery of, of surviving and, and looking after their families and everything else. And yes, they'll support a political cause at an election, but in between elections, they don't have the same time or the, the same passion or commitment that you and I have. However... Sometimes there are things where the scales fall from the eyes. And the fact that a date has been in, uh, uh, announced, if it's not stuck to, then people will say, oh, wait a wee minute, what, what's happened here? We were told we were going to get a vote on October 19th. What, what's happened? And that's why I, I, it's dead important to me, Roddy. I, I, I just feel... Some of us activists are a wee bit far ahead of the movement because we already uh, have worked out how they're going to drop the baton. A lot of people don't think they are going to drop the baton. We need to go with them and make sure they don't drop that baton. Um, and, and if they do drop it, we're there to say, hey, we've been betrayed. We, we need to change. Well done, Troy. I'd just like to say in the programme of Pure Scottish Prism, we're not always responsible for what people say. And this is a disclaimer. Uh, the, when the mention of a Celtic bus, obviously the management here did not approve that before it was uh, thrown into conversation. Tommy likes to do that to me all the time. I'm, I'm sorry, Rod, I shouldn't have mentioned the champions. I'm sorry. I, uh, uh, I'm every day on my Tommy will not be available for future prisons. <laughs> uh, um, before we go, and of course, everyone, and please, I don't want any nonsense. This, Tommy knows we're only kidding here. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, before we go, I know there's something you want to talk about. Um, what the clock's beating us as always, but Phil, um, the, the nonsense got in your old backyard in North Lanarkshire Council. There was a defection this week um, of an SNP councillor to the Labour Party, and the only other, I believe, as I say, Glasgow now is the only other council left for the SNP. 
this is one that we control, but due to um, a previous um, resignation due to other circumstances, um, that's now switched hands. It must be quite annoying to you to see your old local authority go on Labour. Yeah, it's been Labour forever and we with a golden opportunity here. The, the problem is that, I mean, I'll, the background is I was fortunate enough to be the first non-Labour MP or MSP in Cobridge, Christ and Bells Hill, so know all too well what's going on. And believe me, there is much, much more to come. A nest of clowns, chancers, liars, thieves and the occasional viper, as you would ever want to see. Um, Jordan Linden was selected as leader certainly because of his loyalty to the ideologically possessed GRA, GRA self-ID brigade and his unswerving loyalty to Nicola. He should never have been put in place as a leader of the council. There are dick pics he's floated around social media and the garbage I've heard him utter would give you the bulk. Um, sadly, there's many more where he came from within the North, North Lanarkshire SNP. And uh, the person you refer to is a Michael Coyle who was an old Labour councillor who came for the Bar G, Burgedi out Maui, and moved to Airdrie. He's done rather well for himself. He, his wife and daughter were all councillors at the same time in Airdrie and Shots and had influence over key council departments of uh, licensing and planning. Now, some of you will know what I mean by that. There were many complaints and this arrangement was changed. Michael hung on during 2016 when he was accused, along with others, as being part of the current Monklands McMafia. This is not to be confused with the disgraceful Monklands Mafia under Labour that hit headlines in 1994 with sectarianism amongst the cronyism and corruption allegations. But just Google Monklands McMafia. Just, just Google it. Don't, don't take my word for it, and you will see an array of headlines involving many of the current SNP political incumbents in North Lanarkshire. Some things never change, sadly, in politics, and Michael Coyle appears to be appears to have been unhappy with the position he was given under the, the, the new woke regime in SNP, and has pulled off a, well, let's, let's give him credit, a strategic victory. I'm sure he'll be well rewarded by Labour under a very relieved restructuring by Labour in North, North Lanarkshire. But I'm sorry, it's, it's, it just shows you the shambles that is SNP in North Lanarkshire. What a disgrace. Like I said, watch this space. There's plenty more co uh, to come, given the shysters currently ensconced there. Lady, gentlemen, um, thank you very much. The clock is beaten as is always. Um, it's been a wonderful discussion. I hope you, the viewers, have enjoyed it as much as uh, well, we all have. We all like a wee natter. And again, uh, I'm going to be promoting it like Billy O. I hope you all do the same. Um, and uh, the Yes Festival, get it up there again there, Techie, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, and so no one forgets. And, and tell your friends, tell your neighbours. And if we, I remember Mark was saying this when at the top in, in Edinburgh, the, the, the first ever sort of get-together of the Yes movement during the uh, the 2014 campaign is if you all bring one friend or all bring one person extra um, then you know that can make a hell of a difference so there you've got it now you've got no excuses for not seeing it Yvonne, Phil, Tommy thank you so much uh, and, uh, and you folks until we see you again you and yours please please take care all the best